what do you think of the fireplace? Greetings, Gemstones. Templeton Pace Taylor here, and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Gems. Today I wanted to switch it up uh, with the fireplace, a uh, little bit of ambiance, um, because today I want to talk about what games that made me or shaped me and why, why I play them. Uh, now I am really enjoying this fireplace, and you know what would make it even better? A little bit of music. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, one of the very first games I actually ever played as a kid that I can remember, again, was a few games that were on the Atari. Um, might have been uh, E.T., um, maybe Pitfall. Uh, one of the first game systems I ever have good memories of would be the Nintendo. Entertainment Center system, uh, the NES. I was again. I was I was a kid. I was very young at the time. Um, I believe I was five when it came out. My brother and I had one. My older brother was five years older than me. And uh, we played games like Mario, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Duck Hunt, Spy vs. Spy, uh, many others, many many. Others. But one of the first RPGs that I ever played was Dragon Warrior. And it was really fun. I remember uh, it being very different from other games that I played. My brother was the one who introduced me to it because I watched him play it. And I pretty much got hooked on that particular genre uh, ever since. Now, what was really interesting was that my brother and I would play that game. And we wouldn't really tell each other anything if we found secrets or uh, hidden pathways. We wouldn't let the other one know. We would literally figure things out uh, on our own, and then we would talk about it. Of course, him being older, you know, he obviously was able to find things more than I could or better than I could. But I always thought it was neat just like going around and talking to the NPCs and finding out the story and hearing things that they have to say. I thought it was really cool. Sometimes they would say more than one thing and that was even uh, cooler back in the day. I thought that was really awesome because you got more to learn about the particular NPC or about the game. And that's the game that pretty much started it all for me. Uh, now... There was a time I did kind of stray away from playing JRPGs, and that was when my mom, at the time, got me a Sega Genesis on my 10th birthday. When everyone else had Super Nintendos, that's what I got. So, I can't really say I was jealous, just because I never really saw too much of the Super Nintendo library. The only thing I wanted to play that I didn't wasn't able to was Street Fighter II back in the day, but I mainly got into Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Afterburner 1 and 2, those were really awesome games, uh, Streets of Rage, of course, um, I would say Sonic 2 was the main one that I used to play, I remember I mastered that game to the point where not only did I never die in the game, but I was able to get every single Chaos Emerald, I believe, by the first stage of the Chemical Plant. Because I think every stage in the first level, as if each zone was only two levels in that game, only had three save, save points. And I was able to get the Chaos Emerald on the first run every single time. I had every single one of those uh, um, obstacle, obstacle courses memorized. Uh, I could play it by myself, by myself or Tails, and I could get every single one of them 
on the first try. That's how good I became when it came to that game. It's where I was supersonic right there at Chemical Plant and the rest of the game on. Uh, not only that, like I found out secrets of uh, how to spin dash Metal Sonic to death. Um, how to get behind Dr. Robotnik on the very last boss fight and just wail on him in seconds. Uh, it was, uh, that was my game back in the day. Uh, the two player mode with my friends and cousins and things like that. Uh, yeah, I, I was able to get through those like no problem. But that was like my game. Like, I enjoyed playing Sonic the Hedgehog. And that one was a little difficult when it came to getting the Chaos Emerald. You know, and you got that little hidden ending. You know, and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, they basically just had Sonic, if you haven't beaten the game, uh, spoiler alert, uh, at the end of the game, when he jumps off of the plane towards the screen, he's in his supersonic form, which is really the only major change. Uh, but I ended up straying away from uh, JRPGs, and then someone got me a Fantasy Star 4. Actually, I think it was a friend of mine named Blake who also had a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo way back when. And, man, did that game blow me away. Not only did I like the gameplay and how everything worked with the macro system and how you could do team attacks, which is a big thing. I never saw anything like that before. Um, I love the way they told the story and the comic book style art images all over the screen. It was really cool. Uh, and then I basically played most of the RPGs uh, from uh, from then on. Uh, I played uh, some action RPGs. Okay, uh, I'm going to say this. I did play the original Secret of Mana, but I never beat it. A friend of mine, a friend of Blake, again, same friend, uh, he would rent it a bunch of times uh, from video stores. But never would, I don't know if he ever beat it, but I never beat it. But I remember playing it with him, and I enjoyed it. I thought that was so interesting and different with the way the combat system was. Um, I'm probably one of the few people who likes the Secret of Mana remake, and I have that one. I did play Final Fantasy VI, aka Final Fantasy III, back in the day on the Super Nintendo. Again, another one I didn't beat. And I was really upset at the fact that I didn't beat that one because of how far along in the story I had gotten. And I enjoyed the story on that one. And story is a big thing with me when it comes to games. I really enjoy the story aspect. I want to be pulled in, not just have the gameplay pull me in, but I want to be pulled in to these games. So then after I had my Sega Genesis, Nintendo had a Sega Genesis. Then the next system that I bought when I was 15 and a half, 16 I believe, uh, was the PS1. And the first game I ever bought on that was Wild Arms. And man, do I love that series. I love the Wild Arms series. Uh, I remember playing it. I remember beating it. I loved the gameplay. I enjoyed the story of it. I thought that it was really, really interesting. Hold on. There we go. <clears throat> and that was the game that really, really got me into the genre more than most was Wild Arms. What was even funnier was at the time. Final Fantasy was just coming out later on uh, in the uh, PlayStation life cycle. And that was the second one that I had bought. And wondering, like, where were the others? Because I didn't know about the number differential. Or I wasn't too into the like, whole spectrum of getting information way back when. So I was like, oh, okay, just, I'll, I'm jumping in. I guess I just don't play the other ones. When apparently I did. Uh, and a friend of mine named Lonnie actually bought the game because it was the last one on the shelf at Target at the time, but he never had a PlayStation. He 
you would either go over to my house to play it, or go over to our another friend's house, our friend Ray, and play it there. And it was just because he wanted to get the game before it sold out. And then later on, he bought a PlayStation, maybe like a month later or so. And uh, he would get further in the game and beat the game and do more things in the game than I ever did. Um, but I think what was even more interesting to me was a lot of the life skills that I learned. And I know that sounds funny coming from a guy who plays video games. Uh, but playing a lot of these RPGs, uh, they taught me about uh, teamwork. Uh, you know, working together with, with certain people. And I think that's the reason why whenever I play any JRPG, I always stick with the original three because I feel there's a little bit of loyalty in that regard. Like these are the first three people that you meet, you know, that start the adventure or for uh, whatever your uh, team is made up of. And I've always, always stuck with that. I think Final Fantasy IX, which really wasn't my favorite, favorite of the Final Fantasies. Final Fantasy VIII was my favorite. Um, I stuck, I always stick with the original three. Uh, Final Fantasy IX, I believe I did uh, Zidane, Vivi, Freya, and Garna, which are not your original four party members. Um, technically, it's Steiner who would be in there instead but that was really the only game Wild Arms you only have three people a little tidbit I think that Wild Arms uh, isn't a story about Rudy it's a story about Cecilia I think she's the main character but they tried to turn it around and make Rudy the main character but no I think it's more about Cecilia because they focus on one thing and one thing only the story in there is really good Um, also, I've learned how to really save money, whether it is to buy things that I want or things that I need in life. And, of course, in video games you do that by grinding, and I would say, you know, you save up your money by working. You know, and you don't buy it on frivolous things. You Grinding, yeah, that's tedious. You're doing the same things over and over and over again, fighting the same boss. Uh, enemies, you know, but you're fighting the ones that give you the most amount of experience, the most amount of money. Um, with work, it's kind of the same thing. You do your same job. You know your job. You know you do it for, uh, you know, the same amount of money. You know, the same amount of time. And you know, over time, if you don't spend your money on frivolous stuff, you save it up and you can pay your bills and you can have stuff roll over and. You know, then you can go out and maybe go get a game, you can go get something you need for your car, things like that. Um, unfortunately, I live in a single income household. And although, yes, I can say that I did grow up with a roof over my head and I did have food in my belly. Uh, we weren't the richest of families, unfortunately. So, my mom um, uh, had... A little bit of a gambling problem. I uh, just know a little bit about me. And that's one reason why I related to Grease in Jedi Fallen Order. Because of the whole gambling thing and being alone. So because of that, I needed to find a way to learn how to, you know, have these experiences, you know. You know knowing how to meet, how to be around new people, you know. Sometimes people can be really nasty and mean, you know, but you can still have that same demeanor whether you're around them or not. How to work with the team, how to try to be a, a leader, if need be, you know, which means that I don't, I don't possibly say I'm a leader, so to speak, but I do know how to take charge and when to take charge when people don't know what to do. I just kind of like step up and go off of the knowledge that I know about a situation and just go from there and, you know, kind of tell people what to do and lead, uh, lead people in the direction that's the right way. That I feel at the moment is the right way, you know. And, and some put them in on a direction they need to be, or tell them what job to do, or things like that. Um, I've learned to overcome obstacles. 
uh, that I never thought I'd be able to overcome. And in JRPGs, you're always overcoming obstacles, whether you have to grind more or find this particular item or talk to that particular NPC to get an item to move forward with the story. I've learned to overcome obstacles and move forward in life, so to speak. Uh, I've had a lot of end games and in situations that I've had where I've come out really well because of the decisions I've made, and some that didn't come out so well, you know, but just like in life, you know, game endings aren't always the best. You go through all that stuff in a game, and you see the ending, and you're like, really? That's it? You know, how underwhelming, you know? Um, sometimes life can be underwhelming. You know, you go through all the stuff, you try to get what you need, you reach these goals, and you're like, oh, that's it? So, um, so I've learned quite a few life skills from playing JRPGs, because I wasn't taught a whole lot of life skills. I still don't know a whole lot of life skills, to be honest with you. I can still be very, a very underwhelming person at times, but that's, uh, something that I've, uh, learn to cope with and something that my life will always remind me of a game always because there's always aspects that i think of you know there's even times i'll like hum video game music games when i'm doing you know simple tasks at times so there's times when i'm getting like really energetic and hype and i want to like hum in my head or think in my head a really awesome soundtrack i might have heard from a jrpg now reasons why i like to play them these are things that I've learned from playing them. Reasons why I like to play them are, again, number one is story. I love the story elements and aspects. Uh, number two, I'm more of a technical artist. I don't draw around as much as I used to, but I like the way certain games look. If the game looks good, even if it's a pixelated game, pixel art can look really good. You know, um... As long as the story pulls me in, that's good. As long as the game looks really good in my eyes, it's something I'm willing to play. Uh, I really like, I don't really like games that don't look so good, and they don't tell a very good story. Um, if those two things catch me, then I'll really want to learn the game mechanics, and I'll really want to dive deep into those game mechanics, you know? And... Uh, if the game mechanics are great, awesome, I want to play a game through, and I'll play a game all the way through anyways. You know, at least now I will. Before, I just played a game, you know, and traded it in back in the day. Um, but I really like the fact that I found a genre that fits my personality, fits my style of gameplay. Don't get me wrong, I love playing a lot of older games, beat-em-ups, you know, uh, MMORPGs, of course, you know, I've, uh, I've recently played a AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake, on my laptop, and that game was pretty fun, I enjoyed playing that, I enjoy playing that a lot. Um... Some games that have been a little underwhelming recently, I would say Kingdom Hearts 3 has been kind of underwhelming. Um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has some RPG elements to it, but it wasn't one, it's probably one of the best, the second best games that I like uh, with RPG elements in it. Those are really the, the main two. Um, I haven't been able to get into playing a whole lot of games. Uh, I remember Valkyrie Profile on PS1 was one of my favorite games that I played. Uh, I just thought it was so cool with the Norse mythology. and The story can go in so many different directions. And that's what wanted to make me play it through multiple times. Uh, of course the Wild Arms games. You guys have already know that I've basically played all of them, but haven't beaten all of them. But I still like the way the story modes were. The stories in those games were really amazing, especially with number two, with the plot twist. So that was really good. Um, one game that I really enjoyed finishing back in the day was uh, Magna Carta 2 on the Xbox 360, when I had an Xbox 360. 
I really enjoyed not only the story of that one, um, the voice acting was done extremely well. There were so many plot twists. The gameplay was a little different, but I it's still I got used to it. I like what they did. It was a one of those multiple playthrough type of games, more so with the abilities that you were learning the game. Uh, that one was a really good one. But again, another one that was a little underwhelming because when the game is beaten, quite a few years pass. I believe three years pass in the game. And everybody's still wearing the same outfit. Everyone still has the same haircut. You know, I can see most of the characters, four to five characters, you know, looking the same, but someone's got to look different. Clothes got to look different over three years. You know, don't just use the same character model. You know, throw a little right something different in the ending to make you think oh wow the time has changed like in persona 4 gold on psp like after you beat that game then time passes and quite a few of the characters change like kanji's uh hair is completely different at the end rise looks a little bit older and dresses a little bit more mature it's just the aspect of these games you know some of them have some emotion to them and some of these games actually brought out my emotional side and i'm not always a very emotional person but some games can do that and um these games that i've played that i've gotten into this genre that i've chosen to uh join so to speak i guess you could say or uh, maybe it, yeah, it's kind of, maybe it picked me i guess yeah instead of me picking it um has really turned me into the person that I am now when it comes to playing video games, when it comes to uh, just enjoying my time on my PS4, on my Nintendo Wii, on my PlayStation Classic. And I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys. And maybe in the comments below, you guys can tell me, you know, what games have shaped you you know what's your favorite genre of game what do you get out of it why do you play your games you know it'd be uh really great to hear back from you guys you know uh uh this will right here this will pretty much be the uh the end of the video uh, as always thanks again for watching uh don't forget to like comment and subscribe and do me a favor gemstones stay shiny for me